Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I have an update for you to the uh, red, green, and blue line repair that I had talked about last week. I had some great feedback and some questions, as well as uh, Jose Cruz sent me the actual uh, note from Sony. So I have their actual admission to the problem here and their uh, what they said to fix it in a bulletin, a service bulletin that was sent out in 2001. So we'll take a quick look at that uh, first here. So again, this is if your screen has the red, green, and blue lines, like in the picture that was at the beginning of this uh, video would show you. And this goes into the A chassis or main board with the flyback and everything attached to it. That's a picture of that board right there. And you can see this is a Sony... A technical bulletin from 2001 in September 17th, and it's picture distortion. It says additional information here, but for a description, it says electrolytic capacitors may deteriorate in units used continuously in a high temperature environment, resulting in picture distortion. If this occurs, perform the following modification procedure. So here's uh, what parts that Sony had a part number for these. These are the caps that uh, need to be replaced. This is what their re recommendation is for the upgrade on the two capacitors that I talked about in the prior video. Uh, and then it's, you know, don't worry about this part of the technical bulletin. And then down here, the procedure, it just says replace C572 with a new long life 4.7 microfarad capacitor and replace C586 with a new 105 degree, uh, degrees Celsius capacitor. So those are just higher heat tolerances. And I wanted to show the exact model numbers up here. So I know it might be hard, it's, it's, it's a little bit blurry. It was just from a Facebook message that I got this, but you could pause it, maybe take a look at these because it gives an exact number of, or model numbers here. And there are a lot of ones that I didn't discuss before and some even BVMs, which are these BVM14 M4 uh, units, which are very similar to like the 14 M4 uh, on the PVM side, but they're a BVM. And then it's actually up to a certain serial number when it was produced that it was all made with this low quality or wrong specific or spec uh, caps. Because again, you want to do this this is where the uh, those lines fall into your screen. You don't want to skip on this repair, uh, but this is the exact memo from Sony. So if you want to pause it real quick and see, it's got the Olympus monitors here. I'm going to go a step further, and I still believe that so this is the same A board setup as like the 1354s, 53s, 50s, and all that. So I still think that the same issue can happen there. I just don't think it was as common as it was in this. But I also want to follow up a couple of questions that were given to me about this last video where I had just introduced the problem more in depth and told you guys, you know, hey, it's really important that you fix this right away and do it the right way. Don't do it through the service menu. Because again, the service menu, if you, you change it and keep running your monitor, it could just pop and uh, cause major issues for you. So just another YouTube channel first ask, does this apply to consumer sets? He's seeing it in 16 by nine and they aren't there in four by three. And then same kind of option here for a 14M2. Alexis was asking, he could see the lines when it's an underscan option is activated. Is it serious? Thanks for the video. And that's actually not serious. Both of those times are pretty much normal. You Most of the time you will see these retrace lines like in this picture here, see how it's in an underscan mode or even a 16 by nine mode those lines will show up. They're always going to be there on the CRT. The thing is, once the capacitors go bad in some areas, those lines tend to drop down, and that's, that's what they call the screen distortion when those lines drop into view, and that's when you're, oh, there's an issue with your TV monitor. It could be really anything. These lines could creep down into your picture, but this is a really close-up of that image, and, and you could really take a good look at what it looks like there when you have it in under scan mode and your uh, content is actually down here. Well, those are meant to be there above the screen. So that's actually normal. And um, so if you have even a different model that's not mentioned in the PVMs or BVMs, most likely in widescreen or 16 by nine mode, if it's a four by three CRT, if it's in 16 by nine mode, you'll see these lines. 
And then uh, you'll also see them in under scan mode normally. So here's where it gets into that area of it being trouble. So this is pretty much what you'll see right off the bat if this issue just starts to show up. Like maybe you've had a PVM uh, for a couple weeks, could be a couple months or a year, and all of a sudden you start seeing these lines and it'll just start with one red line and then a green line and then the blue line finally shows up. But that's when the capacitors are starting to fail and that's a good sign that you need to go ahead and change them if you see anything like this because you could go in here and do the OSD trick of pushing those lines up, but that still doesn't solve the ultimate problem of the capacitors being bad or out of the spec for Sony later down the line and giving you that trouble still. It's especially going to be a problem if you see them and they're really separated like this and further down the screen, then you know you've, you've really got to take care of it right away. Those capacitors pretty much 100% fail at that point. Here's another picture of another PVM. They're all the same style. Could be a 20 or 13 inch most of the time. Uh, again, if you see that and it looks like that specifically, don't even try to use the monitor long term. Don't even try to use the OSD and trick it out of the screen. Change those two caps immediately, then reassemble the monitor and test it out, use it the rest of the way and see how it works. But you really got to do these two capacitors. They have to be changed if, uh, if you don't want this problem to eventually show up. And you can go in there, and that's basically everything you need if you want to go and order your own two capacitors for this job and try to get it done or hire somebody to do it then uh, please do so and save your monitor from having to have a new flyback and a couple of new ICs, just a big mess if you uh, let it go too far and it pops the monitor. But hey, thanks again for watching today. I will have more content coming up for you this week, and I'll see you guys next time with some more retro content.